Hi, Claudia. Thanks for joining the show today. Yeah, Alex, great to, great to, great to be here. Thanks, thanks for having me. And yeah, to get started here, can you tell the audience a little bit about your background in history and UX design? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been immersed in design, especially digital design, over 20 years. Uh, I'm from Brazil, so I started my career back then, and, and I moved to the United States, uh, I think it was 2006 or 2007, to further my studies. And again, I picked back my, my, career, my career here. And yeah, I've been all over the place uh, through large uh, agencies, uh, started my own design shop, I've been to startups, I've done a little bit of everything in design. So you act specifically, uh, I was at Disney for seven years wow. and started the UX program at the Walt Disney Studios. And now I'm at uh, director of UX for GoPro on the DTC side. Awesome. And thanks for that background. And one of the things that I imagine is pretty relevant to what you're doing in e-commerce is, is personalization. Uh, how do you approach personalization with UX? Yeah, so this is a great, great topic, which is how UX can really make a difference in personalization, especially we get to a point that we have so much data Right. I mean, from all sides, right? So I think when you talk about personalization, we really need to decode what that is and what that means to, yeah. to different companies and each company will have its own answer. Uh, for us, especially, it's really about the relationship. It's really about building trustful relationship between the brand and the customer. So it's really understanding deeply their needs and be able to not only provide relevant content, but primarily predict what their needs are and how you wax play a part of that. It's kind of it's kind of key because it is it is the core of our our, our 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 jobs, which is really understanding user needs and kind of how we represent that into a product to make sure that the voice of the customer is there. So yeah, there's tons of ways you can slice and dice this topic, but uh, it is. It is vital that you play uh, ex- strategic as well as executional role in any personalization strategy. I guess a quick question on that. Does the web personalize, how do you tie the web personalization strategy in with the product personalization strategy? And should those be the same or does it change once you have someone who's converted on the product side? Yeah, so the, those, can, those are not one of the same, but I think the marketing personalization, right, which offers do you see, what kind of content do you see, uh, definitely that's how it's, everything started, right, like you see personalization, people, okay, let's uh, include the subject on an email, uh, let's put Alex there, so we can start yeah. getting that one-on-one conversation, right, so we can go as brief as that, as actually dynamic UI, that change features and modular to adapt to different features and tasks and all that based on your state, based on a, mu- a multitude of levels of segmentation. So it really can go really deep that you can have a one-on-one experience that's really tailored for you and that can way go, go, beyond, way, like go way beyond content, right? So it can go really into how the product works and how modular the experience might be. Gotcha. Let, let's talk about the, the kind of the back end of this, because nowadays you have so many APIs and data sources and systems, disparate systems. How are you incorporating all those to create a great end user experience through the product? Yeah, so I think that's a, that's a, 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 great, a, great, a great topic as well, because it's, it's been evolving quite fast in the industry, right? So I think the, like hyper-personalization or, or many channel experiences. And uh, there was in one-on-one marketing, that kind of stuff. It's, it's been a buzzword for a long time. It's nothing new. Yeah. I think what's, what's happening lately more and more is the advance of technology and new platforms that are coming to be able to not only aggregate all the data and make sense of that, but also machine learning on top that can predict analytics that on top of this that can kind of guide how your UI might behave. So it really technology is enabling not only marketers, but, but UI professionals and designers to really rethink how we approach design altogether, right? You're not only designing for, okay, responsive and designing for uh, multi-touch devices and all that. So, but you are really designing now for uh, a very broad spectrum of user needs. 
So how can you accomplish that through data? Uh, so the data will come into these buckets, will triangulate, and, and you're going to start seeing these patterns emerge of different user types and behaviors. And that's when you start understanding what kind of personalization makes sense, which level should you go. But I think the, just back, backing up a little bit on the UX kind of role here, not only having a role to design systems that are enabling this personalization to take place, but also really understanding and defining the journeys that the users are coming to the product doing. So I think there's a strategic, a very strategic side of this work that we take a different type of role, which is not only tactical, but there's definitely a tactical piece with like, how can we create a system that enables your UI to be very dynamic, your, your message to be dynamic, your content to be very dynamic. Claudia, when working with these complex products mm -hmm. across buyer's journeys, taking in marketing data, taking in all these data sources, how do you ensure that the design team is avoiding silos and getting the communication and collaboration they need from every part of your organization and also the customer's perspective? Yeah, this is an excellent question. Alex. So, so yeah, so I think that there's different ways to structure teams, right? Like, so... Right. The functional teams like engineers and designers and all of that. And then you have the completely decentralized, which is like, like project base and whatever. And in my experience, and I'm experienced a little bit of all different types of flavors of structures, but it's an design team. It's, it's, it's a little bit complex in, the, in terms that, to, to your point, like we want to avoid, like we want to avoid the silos, but we also want to have autonomy in each in specialization in each single vertical. And that vertical can be anything, can be a journey path, can be a product or can be uh, a feature of a product, depending how big you are. So I think it's key uh, to structure a way that you have this level of autonomy and specialization that you really get into the shopping path, for example, or the purchase path or, or the engagement path, whatever those are. But you, you need somehow to have these uh, horizontal layers that are serving the teams and connecting these dots, right? Especially UX, when we talk about uh, folks that are like matrix organizations and pods and squads, it's really easy to get siloed yep. uh, and very uh, like heads down into your own specific roadmap and all. So in UX, it's a little bit different because that works really well for engineers. They're delivering against a roadmap that's very well defined. It's, they can have full autonomy over that. But what happens with UX is, again, uh, we see things a little bit more holistically. And we want to have the consistent experience from beginning to end. We don't want to have a fragmented experience in different parts of your app or your, your, your system. So... I think having this, this horizontal layers of like design systems and design thinking from a strategic perspective, that's really looking at things holistically and producing deliverables that will feed into these verticals are kind of key. What type of advice would you have for designers that are maybe considering entering the field today or actually entering the field today? Yeah, I think designers today, there's a lot to do uh, with being able to rationalize their design decisions and communicate effectively design decisions. I yeah. think um, I used that before, but I can't remember where. Uh, you are creators of possibilities. Uh, and really, there is a, there is a, like, we don't have all the answers. Like, again, design is a process of learning, validating understanding and really what we need to do i think a lot of the new young designers is really being able to understand that that we are creating these different options and that each option will have a pro and con depending on the use case that's applied to so be able to rationalize these decisions and be able to go beyond the the, the in your face type of solution and go okay how can we expand that and, and, and don't be attached to the work. I think that's, that's a key for new designers is we are trying to, like we are, we, we are searching for answers as much as anyone else in the company, right? We are trying to learn from our customers and, and it's not a, a, a fixed kind of subject. It changes, behavior changes over time. 
Uh, some are more ingrained, some others are, are more fluid, but it's it's uh, really, we might not have an audience. So just be okay with that, uh, but be be very curious to, to to go out and test. Someone asked me one the other day, what's, what makes a good designer versus a great designer? And I think that's a great question. And it, uh, there are several factors, but I think one of the main ones that I know is curiosity and ability to explore beyond the, the obvious and, and really uh, be able to rationalize that, be able to look at and in a very practical way and understand why this would work versus not and why solution A is better than idea B or that kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, that's great advice. Anything else top of mind? Nope, I think we're good, man. I think I'm right. <laughs>